Hello, everybody out there today. Oli's lucky enough to read to you one of his favorite books ever, Casey at the Bat. Oli loves this book, and it was written by this guy named Ernest Lawrence Thayer. Wonderful book. It looks kind of old, but that's because little Oli got it read to him when he was a little boy. So that's probably why one of my favorites is Casey at the Bat. Here we go. <clears throat> it looked extremely rocky for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood two to four with but one inning left to play. So when Cooney died at second and the Burroughs did the same, a pallor read the features of the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go. The rest were leaving there with the hope which springs eternal within the human breast. But they thought if only Casey could get a whack at that, they'd put even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, and likewise so did Blake. The former was a pudding, and the latter was a fake. So on that stricken multitude, a death-like silence sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single by the wonderment of all, and the much despised Blakey tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and they saw what had occurred, there was Blakey safe at second, and Flynn a hugging third. Then from the gladdened multitude went up a joyous yell. It rumbled in the mountaintops, it rattled in the dell, it struck upon the hillside and rebounded on the flat, for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his cap. No stranger in the crowd could doubt was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then, when the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed from Casey's eye. A sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Straight one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on the stern and distant shore. Kill him, kill the umpire, shouted someone from the stand, and it's likely they would have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He made the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddened thousands, and the echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain. And they knew that Casey wouldn't let the ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lips. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel vengeance, his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out.